So the TrueView uh, 3D IS or 3D imaging sensor, uh, this is kind of our brand name for the sensor, the product line. Um, this includes um, the 410, 515, 635, and 640 sensors. Um, we're going to be talking about each of these in some detail. Um, and just for reference mostly, um, and a little bit of know-how, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through some of the hardware on these. So I'll start with the 410. Um, it's going to be very similar to at least the 515 closer, and then the 6 600 series, they're the similar components, so just different laser scanner, of course, on those. So the central black box here you see um, in the middle of this aluminum frame, uh, this is essentially where the brains of the system are held, uh, housed on the uh, on the sensor. What we have in here is the uh, Planix a ABX-15. Uh, this is our positioning uh, solution. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. It also includes the onboard computer, what we call the CCU or central compute unit. Uh, this is just this where you see the TensorFlow Google computer. It's just a small onboard computer that does a lot of the processing as we go. Essentially the brain of the system. Um, there's also a timing board in here. We call this, in, it's a in-house manufactured, well, not manufactured, but in-house design um, board. System sync, we call it system synchronization board. So it just gets all the timing together and makes sure everything's ever, everything is in sync with each other. I mentioned this just, you know, as a reference. Uh, for operators, you'll never really, you know, you'll never have to go into this this area. If anything needs to be done in here, um, that's kind of a return to factory type repair. Uh, if anything goes wrong in there, that's that's something we'll, we will have to we'll have to work on. But it's just for reference, and, and you know, more for your own orientation. So the 410 uses a Quantra GM8 Ultra. Um, I won't go into too much depth. We'll give a little bit of the specs here later on that. Um, just that black cylinder uh, on the right side of the screen. Um, this, this is the laser scanner that comes out of the automotive industry, uh, what we call an automotive class LiDAR. Um, next, we'll see the UMS here is what we call it. This is the universal mass storage. This is just a USB stick. Um, not the exact model we're using currently, but it gives you the idea. So it is just a kind of mix the data transfer, a little simple. Uh, you, this is something you'll have uh, plugged into the aircraft or into the sensor during flight and what the data is transferred onto after flight. Uh, this will have you know all of your flight data after your flights, and it also has some configuration files on it that you know essentially tell the system how how you want it to operate during the survey. And this is what, like I said, which take the data from the sensor to the computer for processing. At the bottom, you'll see these uh, two cameras. Um, uh, these are two 20 megapixel RGB cameras, uh, they're custom cameras. Um, we use them because we wanted a you know, really good camera for mapping. They've got a mechanical shutter, a uh, fixed focal length. Um, that's, you know, and then they're quite good for, uh, for mapping, at least from the results we've seen, everything, they do, they do a pretty good job. So it's all held together by this aluminum frame. Um, also function as a stand uh, when it's not on the drone, so it keeps those cameras from uh, touching the ground and making it to where you can actually set it down uh, if you need to. You don't have to have it in the case or on the aircraft all the time. If you if you got it, if you're pulling it off and you want to set it down, you can. Uh, the sensor also has a self-contained power, so it, it does not. The only way it interfaces with the drone um, really is just a mechanical mount, which 
Uh, you can see at the top that black, the black mount. Uh, that's the only really interaction with the aircraft that it has, so it's kind of long for the ride. Uh, de and depending on your platforms, some of some of the more um, if you if you're choosing an aircraft that has a longer flight time than some with like some like the M600, we have integrated in the past a uh, power that it can pull power from the aircraft, but those are on aircrafts that can you know handle that extra power draw. Um, because you have that longer flight time. The mount is compatible with the uh, DJI Ronin. This is the mount we use on all of our, pretty much all of the uh, the systems. We'll, we'll use this dovetail mount. Uh, it's a simple uh, in interface that allows it to be mounted pretty easily and it's it's fairly secure. Um, I haven't had any issues with it, so we, we've continued to use it. So I mentioned it's all tied together with this uh, aluminum frame. Now here's a, here's a little better view of the cameras uh, with the unit flipped over, and you can also see the frame here. Um, you know, these cameras are mounted uh, 25 degrees left and right of Nader. Uh, it just gives them about a 62 degree uh, cross track field of view. This gives us roughly you know 120 degrees field of view for the cameras themselves. Um, these cameras do have have their own SD cards um, for recording imagery. And depending on the type of project you're flying, that may be something you use. But for a lot of typical projects with TrueView systems in general, um, the images will be transferred to that UMS uh, you know, that I mentioned. And you don't necessarily have to be popping the, uh, the SD cards out of the cameras. So here's some specs for the, uh, the 410. Uh, mostly, of course, the Conergy M8 uh, stats are in here. Uh, one thing I think it's important for users to understand, uh, the laser itself uh, uh, is, a, as I mentioned, an automotive class LiDAR. Uh, it's actually an eight-channel system. Um, so it does have a fan of, you know, fan of lasers. So it's got eight lasers coming out of the uh, sensor. Uh, I will back up here uh, for this illustration down here. Um, it does have a slight off Nader look, um, you, you can notice there, and which makes sense if you think about it. Um, on top of you know, on top of a vehicle or something, it is scanning a little bit below the horizon in that application. Uh, it's just an integral part of the way you know these systems work um, and are designed. But the way we integrate it, uh, this within the TrueView, uh, at least the 410. The others as well kind of compensate for some of that. You know, if you're flying a drone, you're you're going to have at least some sort of pitch forward as you're you're going forward, and it kind of straightens that uh, that look angle out. Nothing that really will affect anything. Just kind of a a little note. So these are the specs for the 410. As I mentioned, it is a class one uh, laser. Uh, 905 nanometers, so it is uh, eye safe. Um, we expect the effective range for the 410, you know, the flying height, they're the max height at 75 meters, although we typically recommend flying a bit lower, around 60 meters or so. Um, and I'll give these similar range specs on the other systems as well. This is kind of just based on our own in house testing and benchmarking and characterization of the systems. Uh, if you go to the, the Quantergy site or some of these other LiDAR manufacturers' websites, um, especially in the automotive sector, you'll see you'll see much longer ranges listed out, you know, 100, 200, or even 300 meter range. Uh, but take these specs carefully. Um, you want know, to take a close look at what kind of rec reflectivity they're talking about and what kind of detectability they're talking about. So this 75 meters we specify that is effective range from mapping. And by mapping, we mean to a 20% uh, or less reflective target with 99% detectability, uh, giving limited dropout. Now, if you've worked with LiDAR before, um, you know that these ranges, they're, they're not binary, of course. Uh, say if you fly at 76 meters, you're not all of a sudden going to get 
no data, uh, you're, you you just start. You can start getting dropouts when you start getting higher than that. Um, it's just to be expected because you're, you're you're getting higher than that range. Uh, that's kind of why we, we we spec that range at 75. But if, of course, if you start flying high enough, you 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 will you won't get any returns back. Uh, but like I said, it's not binary. We do have, of course, have customers that have flown higher, have gotten decent results. It's kind of just uh, something you'll have to. It depends on your project and something you'll have to definitely test. Um, make sure the results you're getting from that kind of flying height is is uh, works for your type of project. I mentioned with the cameras, we get a 120 degree field of uh, field of view. Um, this light, lidar it does have a 30, 360 degree scanner. Um, it is rotating full 360 degrees, but we too do typically recommend uh, that you only process probably plus or minus 45, 40 to 45 max, maybe 50 <clears throat> around Nader. So you have a 80 to 90 degree field of view of the lidar. Um, you can, of course. It is it's selectable. You can grab that whole 360 degrees if you want, but of course, at some point you're you're hitting the bottom of your aircraft and you're getting pointless data anyway. So we we spec that. Uh, uh, we we typically do 80 in, in most of our projects that we do. Uh, so it is smaller than the imagery, so you don't have to worry about planning for the photogrammetry. You'll be planning for the lidar itself. Like I said, I did mention the Quantor G is an eight-channel system. Uh, you can get up to three returns per channel. Uh, returns are important when you're dealing with Canopy. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, M8 is a 420 kilohertz scanner, so it's about 52 kilohertz per per channel, 53-ish. Uh, we benchmark this accuracy and precision of these, um, and you know, in-house we really feel for mapping that you're going to routinely get better than five centimeters with the 410, uh, often quite a bit better than that, but we're comfortable specking that as uh, you're going to get uh, five centimeters on you know, any TrueView 410 survey you know, that you do. Uh, the precision, uh, I think you can think about this more as noise. Um, this type of sensor, the automotive class, are a little bit noisier than uh, some of the Survey grade, like the uh, what's on our uh, 635, 640, so that's a, the Regal Minivux 3. Um, so you can get anywhere uh, up to five centimeters of noise, but we'll we'll look at that in the data. Um, of course, we've got ways to compress that envelope, uh, uh, what we call smoothing, and it, it can bring that uh, that noise down quite quite a bit. Operating time on a full battery for the 410 is about 90 minutes. Uh, weight is about uh, about 2.25 kilograms, so that's about uh, just it'll be just a little under that. So. Um, next, I'll jump into uh, the 635-640. So we, you'll see here uh, a lot of similarities. Uh, of course, this one looks is quite a bit different in scale it is a lot bigger but you'll see that the the same components for the most part are here besides the laser scanner and the Aplanix um, with at least the 640 the 640 can have the APX 20 which is a higher precision um, positioning system uh, you also see in the top rails there that external IMU that is not there on the 635 um, with the 635, we use the APX15, just like the 410 and the 515, uh, and that's not there. With the APX20, you get that ex extra external IMU to get a little bit more, to get better accuracy over the, the 15. But like I said, same components. Uh, the cameras are the exact same uh, on all our units. Uh, battery uh, is the exact same. Uh, same CPU or uh, CCU board, so that's the same computer inside, uh, same synch system synchronization board. Uh, you'll see that it's got the Regal Minivux 3 on it over there on the left hand side of the screen and it uses the same mount as the as the 410 uh, 515. 
Let's look at the specs we have on the uh, 635, 640 uh, system. This is a bit of a, this is a higher end system, you know, that's a more survey grade, um, as we say. So same, fairly similar specs with uh, say like the camera and we'll, we'll still be processing the uh, same 80 degree, or, uh, yeah, 80, 80 degrees field of view for the LiDAR, their range is a bit higher. We expect about 100 meters, um, the same reflectivity uh, as the 410. Uh, this is just a single beam system. Uh, so we're gonna be up, get up to about five, um, five returns per pulse. Pulse repetition rate is selectable. Um, typically users will fly it on the, the higher setting. Accuracy, as you can see, is uh, depending on what system you have. Um, depending on the, if you have the APX 15 or the APX 20. So we expect the, uh, the 635, you get about, you know, three centimeters RMSC or better. Um, 640, it's about two centimeters or better. Um, I'll say one of the notable differences you look at the data is that the precision or in that you know that noise envelope these are a lot less noisy systems uh, than automotive class slider uh, you'll you'll see that mostly when you look at hard surfaces uh, well, with the uh, 635 we routinely measure about you know better than two and a half centimeters so less than an inch uh, and then less than two and a half uh, centimeters for the 640 so less than better than two centimeters or say yeah, you know, this is peak to peak uh, noise. As I mentioned, the same, this does have the same camera subsystem. Uh, this is, of course, going to be a little bit heavier um, than the 410. It is quite larger, uh, and the 640 is going to be a little bit heavier than the 635 with that external IMU. Uh, it's got a bit more power draw. Uh, operating time is roughly an hour, um, give or take for these 600 models. So next we're, we'll go into our newest system, the uh, 515. Um, you can see it's very similar to the 410. Uh, it uses kind of the same, it's the same form factor, it's just of course has a different laser scanner on it. Uh, you'll see it has the same component size uh, mentioned with the 410. Uh, it does have the Hasai Pandar XT32. So, um, quite a bit different uh, laser scanner. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to the specs. Same cameras, same exact frame, same battery, um, and of course it is compatible with the, the run amounts as previously mentioned. So we expect the effective range for this uh, sensor about 80 meters. Um, of course you can fly higher or lower. Uh, we typically fly lower ourselves. Um, same cross track field of view that's for the camera. They, um, this laser scanner does have 32 beams um, as opposed to the single on the Regal systems and eight on the Quantity base one, uh, up to two returns per per beam. Um, pulse repetition has got it's about 640 kilohertz uh, sensor. Uh, accuracy is going to be very similar to that of the uh, the four four ten. So better than five centimeters RMSE and then precision about, it's still got that noise since this is another automotive class slider, but it does have a significant uh, bump in the beam count. So you, you got a bit better on that, uh, the penetration through stuff like vegetation. As I mentioned, same cameras. Um, the system is uh, a little bit lighter than the 410 and you'll have uh, Operating time this year about an hour. Um, may get a little bit more than that. Uh, can't imagine it pulling too much more power than the 410, but it is a does have more beams to power. So um, well, while we're talking about it, uh, here's the battery. Uh, so this is the. It's just a. It's not a in-house made battery or anything. 
Uh, this is just the battery you use. Uh, it's a good, reliable battery. You'll notice uh, it does have a meter on there to show you kind of a vague percentage. Um, this is this is the same battery you use across the platforms. Um, you do get two with uh, each system. These are, of course, purchasable through us or um, on it. You could probably maybe get them even a little bit cheaper directly from, from the dealer website. Uh, it's up to you. But um, they're, they're, they're just a standard off the shelf uh, type battery. Any uh, questions about the hardware so far? All right. All right, so next, uh, I, I've got a slide here that shows it mounted on an